What's going on everybody, Ask Austin Harley back with a video. Today's video is gonna be about real estate. So should you become a real estate agent? I just made a video about why you need to become a real estate agent in 2020, but this is gonna be a little bit more in depth for the people that are working a full-time job, or honestly, people that are realtors right now to make sure this is gonna be a good career for you. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of this career and things that I had to overcome becoming a real estate agent for the past five years. If you already don't know about me, my name is Austin Harley, you can check out this video Video right here. I've been a real estate agent since I was 21. Nonetheless, I'm going to give you some truth facts that I couldn't find anywhere else on YouTube. So stay tuned on that. By the way, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and let's jump right into it. So I think that a lot of people get attracted to real estate and being a real estate agent just because they think you can work from home or you can kind of make your own hours and be your own boss. But like, let's be real guys, that's not actually the truth. If you really wanna do real estate as a full-time career and make good money at it and not just like, squirm by being that like agent that does two transactions a year, then you know, you gotta put a lot of hours into it and you're not really gonna be able to pick your schedule because your clients are most likely gonna be picking your schedule. It's not until you advance in your career as a real estate agent that you really get to start picking and choosing who you wanna work with. At the beginning, you just gotta kinda take what you eat because it's sales, right? I mean, you don't really have a choice in the beginning. However, there's one huge advantage in real estate that I believe makes it just the top tier industry that you can easily get into. First off, if you don't know how to become a real estate agent, check out this video I made right over here and watch that video to the full because it's the easiest possible way you can get your real estate license in 2020 as of right now. The average profit per deal, at least in my location, you're making at least, let's just say on average, seven to $10,000. And because of that, the way that I look at it is it only takes about $1,500 to become licensed you're literally like, what is that? Triple quadrupling on your investment just by becoming a licensed real estate agent. And not to mention that money is gonna be self-employed income. So you can write off things, you can get more business tax deductions, and you're basically running a small business. Every single transaction that you do, all the work that you outsource employs other people. And that's why the government, that's why counties love real estate agents and real estate brokerages because they employ people. Whenever you go to a closing, you have to hire a home inspector, an appraiser, a lender, there's underwriters that are working underneath the lender. There's a title company, there's attorneys, there's so many things and there's taxes that you have to pay to the county. So you're actually doing a really good thing for your county and for your neighborhood. But where I really wanna dive into if you should get a real estate license and become a real estate agent is where I think a lot of people just kind of have a misconception because working at a company for a job, at a nine to five job, you're gonna be told what to do, right? They're gonna give you instructions, you're gonna be hired and they're gonna give you your set pay and you're gonna expect a paycheck. When you're a real estate agent, you don't know when you're gonna get paid and especially when you're new, you don't really know what to do. So have the expectation of having to really spend a lot, a lot of time educating educating yourself, learning before you get licensed, while you get licensed, and after you get licensed. Even to this day, almost five years in the game, I'm still spending at least 10 hours a week self-educating myself, watching YouTube videos. So subscribe to this channel because you can learn a lot from this as well. So, I mean, all jokes aside, you need to spend a lot of time educating yourself. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand when they get into real estate. You're gonna be in the dark just guaranteed you're gonna be in the dark for at least a one year time period. Some people get anxiety, that's why a lot of people drop out of real estate. They don't know what to do and nobody's there to guide them or nurture them through how to do it. There's actually a lot of videos on YouTube. You don't need to pay for mentors, you don't need to pay for coaching. You don't need to go to Keller Williams and give them away half or more of your commission just to learn because they have the best coaching program. All that stuff is old school. You need to be watching the digital age on how to get clients, how to get real estate leads, and how to close deals on YouTube. Also my channel as well, so you can subscribe to that. You need to spend a lot of time learning. I would say in the beginning, you need to spend at least six hours a day self-educating yourself if you really wanna propel yourself forward in this industry. And that's how I made 100 grand my first year in real estate. So to go to that mindset of like thinking that you're gonna be picking your own hours is not really realistic because it's not true. When you're in real estate, especially your first, I would give it at least two or three years, you really don't have a choice. You're gonna be working 60 to 70 hour weeks and you can ask any real YouTuber on here that does at least 10 to 15 million or above in real estate sales and they will tell you the exact same thing. <laughs> if you just wanna do like 10 transactions a year, 
Uh, in my opinion, it's not really worth it. You're gonna be losing more money and time than you are gonna be gaining. Uh, then, you know, you can do that. Yeah, that's completely your choice. But if you really wanna make this a business career to where you can elevate yourself in life and really escape your nine to five job and working for other people, then you have to put in the work for the first two or three years. Which also leads us to an amazing point because when you work for another company, yeah, you can progress, but you're kind of at the liberty of your boss liking you, you know, giving you that promotion so that you can climb up the corporate ladder or whatever business you're working at. But when you're a real estate agent or anything in real estate, you control your own promotions. So the harder you work, the harder you get promoted pretty much. You know, in the beginning, you're a small business, so you're doing everything. You're doing the marketing, the sales, the accounting, all of this, which means you're gonna become very well skilled. Now, one of the biggest things that people think is that real estate is easy money, and I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I have heard that. They think people get their real estate license, and they see how easy it is to get their license, and they're like, oh my God, like, you know, I can make some easy money. All I gotta do is talk to someone and close the deal. I will tell you, though, in the beginning, when you're not doing a lot of transactions, it seems easy. You may be overwhelmed with the amount of information to learn how to do it, but you're gonna be like, oh, that was easy. You know, that's an easy 10 grand. Uh, but you know, the reality is if you wanna make this into a business that self-sustains itself and outsource it to other people so that you really can have the freedom, something like I've built, you, then you need to be doing at least 30 plus, 40 plus transactions a year. And to be able to do that, it's an extremely stressful business. I think it's like the number two or three most stressful event in someone's life, moving. And I can tell you, if you're not knowing what you're doing or how to set expectations or talk to a client or communicate properly to a client because you've never done it before, then you know, you're gonna end up screwing up and it's gonna be extremely stressful and it might even cost you money. Now, some qualities you need to have or at least need to get up to speed with extremely fast to be a really good real estate agent and not get left in the dust. You need to be really good at technology. It's a huge thing. You need to be good at computers, need to know how to email people, need to know how to communicate to people. I can't understate this. You can't just be like, oh, I know how to use a computer. You need to know how to convert different documents such as Microsoft Word to PDF documents. You need to know how to rotate files in case they get scanned wrong. You need to know how to scan. You need to know how to use a DocuSign type template because everything is electronic nowadays. You need to know how to communicate with people via email because a lot of people don't work in a field that involves a lot of like online communication. Some people work in fields that is only verbal or face-to-face -face communications and that's kind of like a completely different realm. You need to be very, very organized. To be a really, really successful realtor involves doing a lot of transactions, right? Because the more transactions you do, more money you can make. So if you're doing a lot of transactions and there's like 25 to 40 tasks a transaction to do or deadlines, you need to be extremely organized. This isn't to scare you like if you're not good at technology it doesn't mean you can't become a realtor it just means you need to spend more time self-educating yourself on YouTube how to set up a Google Calendar how to set up a Gmail properly so that you can read all your emails correctly and you're dealing with legal contracts people's lives and income is on the line here so you need to take this stuff extremely serious another thing I'll say is you need to be outgoing you need to get out of your comfort zone uh, if you're an introvert you know you may want to think about how to get out of your comfort zone the more you get out of your comfort zone the more money you're gonna make and real estate is gonna push you far out of your comfort zone. And one of the last things that I think you need to really, really improve on is to be really, really solid on the phone. You need to be good on the phone. You need to be able to meet people virtually over the phone, talk with them, be able to convert them, make them feel comfortable, more importantly, be likable on the phone, smile on the phone, and you need to be on the phone like 24 seven. I mean, every single day you need to be prospecting on the phone, whether it's following up with old people, following up with new people. So if you hate your phone, and you don't wanna look at it anymore, this might not be the industry for you because honestly, you need to spend a lot of time on the phone. But with all of the things that I just told you, you have an amazing opportunity to get better at those things. And that's just a small glimpse of the things or qualities or traits that you need to get good at or increase your skill level on so that you can get paid more. Because remember, the more you know, the higher your paycheck goes. So you need to get better at those skills anyway and uh, it's really gonna give you kind of like an insight to what running a small business is. Now there is a difference between running a transactional real estate agent business and then just running a, a full-time real estate agent business. And the two differences is a lot of agents just choose to do transaction at a time, 
uh, you know, they follow the old school like Keller Williams, Coldwell Banker methods of like reaching out to their sphere and really relying on people to use them and trust them for their services, which is fantastic and all if you have a huge sphere and you just want to spend all day long prospecting those kind of people, but to really build a business that can grow out so that you can refer out business to other people and really snowball this thing into like a mini brokerage almost or like a team so that you don't have to put as many hours in it or have to work, you know, because think about it, if you're sick, you can't work. And if people are trusting you only for your services and not like this company that you've built, it's very difficult to refer out people when they trust you because they're not gonna trust that other person you refer out to. So you gotta build credibility, build a business, and that's why I stressed it. In the beginning, you need to spend a lot of time. But that might all be really confusing right now and that's totally okay. But for any of you experienced realtors out there, if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below because I'd be very curious how you run your real estate business, where you get your leads, and how you are doing, how many sales you're doing. Because I always love to connect with the real estate agent community and see what's going on there. But nonetheless, this is probably one of the best careers you can get yourself into with the lowest risk because your only overhead is 1500 bucks and then maybe some marketing costs to send out some flyers or run some Facebook ads, which is really nonetheless, or you could simply just talk to people. So it's the very lowest cost business that you can get into with the highest return as far as sales because you're trading services. There's no upfront really investment besides $1,500 to get your real estate license, which by the way, if you haven't already watched that video and you're considering it, watch it right there. I'm gonna ping it up there. But nonetheless, I hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one.